Hi, my name is Tom. Welcome to part 6b, Resting Membrane Potential. So this is a continuation of uh, part 6a, obviously. Hopefully you've watched it. Um, but just uh, the last thing we were talking about was an equ equilibrium potentials of ions. Um, and just to reinforce this, the equilibrium potential of an ion is reached uh, when the flux uh, due to uh, concentration gradient is equal to but opposite in direction uh, to the flux due to electrical gradient. Sorry for the poor handwriting. Um, so that that was just where we were up to in the last video. And now, uh, I actually want to introduce you to a couple of equations. The first one is the Nernst equation. And this actually, if we are given, uh, here is the concentration outside the cell and the concentration inside of the cell. And actually, we can plug, if we know these two values, we can plug them in and find out the, what the equilibrium potential will be for a particular ion. So, uh, I'll just run through the equation quite quickly. Um, actually, we'll do it with this example, I think. Um, potassium. So, it's equal to 61, which is a constant. And it's related to a few other physical constants and the temperature of the human body. Divided by plus 1, which is the charge, or Z, up there. Um, and we've got log uh, of um, the concentration outside the cell in millimoles per litre, in this case for uh, potassium it's 5 uh, and inside it's 150 um, and then this equals um, nine, uh, negative 90 millivolts so it's kind of cool it's a little it's a neat little equation and uh, quite useful but 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 what about um, when we're talking about uh, multiple ions because obviously, you know, as cool as it might be uh, to be able to work this out, um, only knowing, you know, those concentrations, um, we can't work out the membrane potential um, just with, you know, one ion. Um, we need to know, you know, we, we need, if we want to be able to work that out, um, we can't use the Nernst equation. We've got to use the GHK equation, and here it is up here. So, we've got the membrane potential is equal to this constant again, uh, and then we've got the log, and then we've got all these bits. And to make it simpler, uh, we can consider it in these little sections. So, this section here is relating to an ion called ion A, and this section here is relating to, a, to an ion called ion B, and here we might have C or whatever, we can keep going. So, um, this uh, ion A is actually positive, and um, the reason it's positive uh, is because of the way the equation is set out. Um, uh, because when we're uh, using, uh, when, when, when we're uh, putting in a cation or a positive ion in our equation, uh, we have to put the outside concentration on the top line and the inside concentration on the bottom line, as I've just noted here. Conversely, uh, we have to do the opposite for anions, so negative ions. So B obviously is negative because it's the reverse of, of A in these concentrations. Um, if C was positive, then it would be O and then I on the bottom. But yeah, I think you get the picture. P uh, PA here and PB here is uh, the relative membrane permeability for that particular ion. So in other words, how easily that ion is able to cross the cell membrane. So let's have a look at an example. We've got here the uh, membrane potential or the voltage of the membrane and we'll say this is for a neuron because actually this, these numbers here um, these ions and uh, is actually for a resting membrane potential in a, in a neuron. So we've got you know our constant, the log, and then all the numbers. 
and of course at the end it's equaling our resting membrane potential. So um, as we can see we've got the uh, relative membrane permeability, so that's the first numbers, and then we've got the concentrations inside um, and outs outside, uh, but Sorry, outside and inside, outside and inside, and then inside and outside for the reverse because this is a anion. Okay, cool. Now, one thing you might notice um, is that the permeability, the relative membrane permeability for sodium is quite low in comparison to both uh, chloride. Um, but more importantly, um, is quite different to potassium. So, if if this this is just a theoretical, <coughs> pardon me, this is just a, uh, an equation, so it's sort of theoretical. But if this happened exactly, then it, this permeability it's sort of like saying that for every um, one uh, sodium, uh, sorry, for every one's for every four sodium ions that are able to traverse the cell membrane, a uh, hundred potassium ions can. Um, it's it's not as simple as that, but it's you know that's that's the ratio. That's sort of like how different it is. And let's look at this as in a diagram. And actually, we'll introduce this sodium potassium ATPase pump, which is also quite involved in setting the resting membrane potential. In a neuron, so um, uh, yeah, so that this uh, sodium potassium ATPase pump ATPase, meaning that it takes ATP and converts that to ADP. Uh, so it uses energy in order to pump, in this particular instance, sodium outside of the cell and potassium inside. And what this does is just by pure numbers, because it's pumping three out and two in, then it's creating a slight, pardon me, a slight positive uh, on the outside and a very slight negative on the inside. So, um, because of this, we've, it's, it's called, in this uh, particular instance, an, an, an electrogenic contribution uh, because of the nature of the pump, but that's I mean, it's sort of, it's not really a huge contribution. It's only very slight, very minor. Really, what this is doing is allowing for potassium to run down its concentration gradient and go back outside the cell. And because if we go back again to our GHK equation, remembering that potassium ions have, um, you know, are able to go across the cell membrane quite easily because of their uh, Quite high relative membrane permeability, uh, and that's you know conversely to uh, sodium, which can't really traverse the cell membrane uh, nearly as well. And so while all this potassium is able to run down its concentration gradient, only a very small amount of sodium is able to run down its concentration gradient. So um, because of this, what we've done is we've actually set up um, a, a massive, uh, you know, uh, positive uh, on the outs, set of positive charges on the outside and negative on the inside. So, um, because of this, uh, this is sort of, you know, how we get our negative 70 millivolts. Um, as our resting membrane potential in a neuron, but uh, what happens is, is it's, it doesn't just stay this way. The potassium ions continue to leak out, uh, and the sodium ions continue to leak in. And what this means is that the sodium potassium ATPase pump is, you know, having to, it has to keep on working. It has to keep using energy. Um, to maintain a dynamic constancy, so uh, to to maintain 
this, you know, negative 70 millivolts. So, yeah, I hope this has been uh, interesting or helpful. This has been part 6B, resting membrane potential.